Well, horn charger at the door. End of the run. Next. Hi guys, Wingbone here once again, and I have a new Thorn build that I'm trying on my Crusader, and I am actually very much enjoying it. It's a different change from the six piece invoker set. So let me show you how it works, give you the little details, the pros, cons, and how to hunt greater ifs with this build. So the key thing is you're still using the two set of invokers for the stacking of the Thorn multiplier. Additionally, you're using the Akans six piece, two piece and four piece, you're using it all, to increase your damage and survivability output as well. And I'm gonna put up here what they do, and additionally, the other items you'll be looking for, skill sets, and additionally, the cubed items as well that help make this perform. So take a look, guys, get an idea for it. I'll be back in a minute to explain how this works. Hey guys, so here's what we need the change up from the previous invoker build that I'm currently using to the new one. So first things first, we're gonna use Blood Brother. We're gonna to to use the Aquilia Curious. And we're also gonna get rid of the Convection of Elements for the Ring of World Grandeur. Now, this reason is because you're gonna find the five best pieces that work for your Akans and keep your two other pieces for the Invokers. In my case, I have Gloves, shoulders, helmet, chest, feet, which allowed me to keep my pants and my bracers for the invoker set. Because I have Ring of Royal Ganager, I now have the six piece set here you can see, reduce the cooldown and cost of all abilities 50 by 50% when Ocarus Champion is active. We'll reduce the cooldown of Ocarus Champion by 50%. And the six piece now, while Ocarus Champion is active, you deal 600% increased damage and take 15% less damage as well. Additionally, we have Thorns now. Your Thorns damage now hits all enemies in 15 yards radius around you. Each time you hit an enemy with Punish, Slash, or Block an attack, your Thorns is increased by 35% for 2 seconds. This is what's key about this build. Keeping Akra's Champion up constantly as much as you can and getting high Thorns stacked damage as well. The more, the higher damage output you'll get. Additionally, you'll want to have the Akrat's Awakening for the faster cooldown reduction. You also want the Endless Walk combo set piece from the Compass Rose and the Traveler's Pledge. And then Jester's Lantern, like in the other Invoker set. And Belt of the Trove is proven to be the best one of all of these so far of items that you can get. Because with the increased damage now from barrel of spikes on your cast bar, you'll do increasingly huge amounts of damage when you get that fully stacked 35% 25 times. And moving on from here, we're going to look at the skill sets again because we changed up a few things. We have Iron Skin again with the uh, Reflective Skin, the increased thorns by, by 300%. Additionally, we're now doing Consecration with Better Nails for the only, only the life per second, but additionally, to deal 100% of your thorns where everything is around you. Bombardment now, to do 200% of your thorns is increased. And also with Belt of the Trove, you'll have this going constantly. Ocarus Champion now as well, you want to have Profit. Because you have such a high cooldown on this skill and your other skills now, this will be up constantly. And you always have that proc basically to get the Fatal Damage reset for a full life will be up most of the time for you. We're keeping Punish on Clarity for the increased block and attack speed when you do trigger it. And for survivability, we're going with Law of Justice Decaying Strength to stay alive and get through those tough times. Key things we want to get on this build too as well, we want to get a lot of cooldown reduction. So adding this in here for the 12.5% will put me a little over 50%. That's your minimal goal. You want all resist gems as well in all of your gear. And additionally, you want a topaz in your weapon. For 
other things, you want to have the Justice Lantern for the damage reduction. You want Bane of the Stricken for that increased damage against the Blues and also Rift Guardian. This is going to help you immensely. It's needed. And then finally, you're also going to have Boyarski's Chip, of course, for that Thorn and the secondary skill. Not necessarily great, but still good for you. This in combination, as you've seen in the earlier video and more to come, the AoE damage you're going to be doing is exponentially huge. So let's take a little bit more of it in action, get an idea how it looks, and play around with it and see how it goes. Quick side note, I forgot to show you guys really quick the skills of the passives you want to do. The key ones you want to have on here are going to be Fervor, Finery, Iron Maiden, and Hold Your Ground. Because when you get this build, and I put the diamonds in here so you can see it with the CDR, and also all resist you want extremely high for the survivability, you want to have that high block percent chance, which you can see here, I'm already at 89%, with Wince, I get the passive from Clarity, will shoot me up to the 100 and keep me alive and block and trigger off that two-piece invoker set constantly. So as for the pros for this build, you have fast trash clear, kite very easily, high durability, and extreme survivability as well with the Aqua Champion and the Prophet. Also, you can easily tell if it's going to be a good or bad rift with the style of this play. Um, for the cons, killing blues and yellows and rift guardians are very hard to kill by themselves. You need that trash to help you out. The only exception is if they spawn a lot of adds or their horde. Those are the two big exceptions. So, obviously, meaning you have a low single damage output, it will build up slowly with Bane of the Stricken, but it takes quite a while to get there. Uh, you also have low mobility and no escapes, so no steed and everything else. You're in there till they die or you die, one or the other. Uh, as for the skills, the only thing you need to really keep up like watching is, is your reflective skin. You want to cast that before you do Consecrate and Bombardment as much as you can to add the damage onto the two skills you have. If you cast it after or during, it won't add it to the ones you have going, unfortunately. Um, also, things to avoid. Blazing Guardians, period. Mobs that run away from you. Five packs of blues. If they have more health than the average Rift Guardian added and combined, it's usually a waste of time. And shielding and teleporters. Those will be nightmares for you. You usually just walk on the next one. Uh, things you want to look for. Any yellow mobs with Horde. That is a good thing. Um, additionally, you want to look for more the better. So just if you have like 10, 15 things, walk to the next pack so you can get d doubled or more. Keep pushing. Um, if you can get a good mixture of both melee and ranged, awesome. And key things to build once again are CDR, strength, all resistance, attack speed, physical damage on the bottom of the list, but you can add them in there, and thorns and all the pieces of gear you can get as well. Bane of the Stricken, Bane of the Trapped, Boyarski's Chip, all diamonds through and through, and also the Topaz and the weapon. And if you go really hardcore, augment your gear to add strength. Those are the key things that are going to help you for your damage output as well. And to leave it off for you guys, here's the closest attempt I had to getting a Greater F90 done, closer than I have with the six-piece invoker, with this little cool, fun build I'm trying out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.